Hey guys, we are back with part five and on the left is what we have now and on the right is what we'll be adding today. This will cover post-processing effects to really make your scene look professional. Additionally, we're gonna be adding this weather system where we have rain and snow effects that we can toggle on and off. These were asked for a lot in the comments, so make sure you keep requesting features for future tutorials. And with that, let's head into Unity. Today we're going to be adding a global post-processing effect. This will help make the scene come fully alive by using bloom and a colored grading. To make a global post-processing effect, right-click in the hierarchy, select 3D object, and then click Post Process Volume. Let's go ahead and create a new profile. Select New. It's going to create an asset for us, and I'm just going to name this Global Volume. Select your volume in the hierarchy again, then click the Is Global flag. This effect will now be globally applied to our scene. Let's make sure to assign the post-process volumes layer to the post-processing layer. If you remember from before, our camera has a post-processing layer on it, and the layer is set to this one, so make sure you have that set up. Okay, so now we're going to add an effect, select effect, and add color grading. Here we have a ton of options, which I encourage you to play around with, but we're going to check mode for HDR and select aces for the tone mapping option. As you can see in the scene view, we already have much better contrast and a fuller spectrum of colors, but it's a little too dark for me. So let's go to post exposure. Anytime you see the word exposure, think of camera exposure. It's what controls how much light enters the camera. So increasing post exposure increases how bright our scene is. Here's a quick little before before and after. It's subtle, but the original looked a little more washed out and I personally prefer what we have now, but we can make it even better. For the next effect, I'm going to grab this glyph rock which has an emission property built into the material. That means it should glow. The only problem is, as of now, the glow really isn't that impressive. Let's see the difference when we add in a bloom post-processing effect. Go back to your global volume and add a bloom effect. Now the main factor that will control the bloom is the intensity, so let's turn this up a bit. Immediately we can see a huge difference we're actually getting that professional glow effect coming from the glyph and this effect even comes with a glowing animation which now we can see with the bloom placed in our scene. There's a couple other important factors like threshold which I'm going to set a little lower to allow the bloom to happen more easily then the diffusion property essentially controls the spread. So if you want the glow to bleed further away from the source increase diffusion. Here I'm actually going to decrease it just a bit. Unfortunately this also affected our skybox lighting which appears a bit too bright and vibrant now. Now, so let's change that in the lighting panel. Select the environment tab and click on the skybox material. Now we can adjust the exposure property to turn down its brightness a bit and I'm just going to set it to about 0.9. Additionally our shadows are a little too strong now with the color grading applied so we can just turn up the intensity multiplier of the environmental lighting to help with that. Now if we look in the distance a bit more the fog has actually become more visible so I'm going to go ahead and turn this down a bit as well to finalize out the scene. Let's do a little before and after to look at the two scenes and see what we've done. As you can see, the bloom effect really makes things come to life and overall provide a more vibrant scene, and the HDR color grading helps increase the contrast and get rid of that washed out look that we had before. Okay, the next thing that we're going to work on are basic weather effects like rain and snow. To quickly get started with this, let's download the asset pack named Polygonal's Low Poly Particle Pack. Add it to your assets, then install and import it. Let's open up the folder named Polygon Particles, then go to the water folder. Here we have a couple different effects so let's organize them in a game object container in the hierarchy named effects. Then we just add both the rain and snow prefabs to the effects container. Now they probably appeared in a random place on your map so let's do a little trick to get them in the right spot. Drag both of them onto your first person controller then zero out the transform coordinates. Now if we play we should be able to see the effects visible to the camera in our scene but there is a problem. If we move around, eventually we no longer see the rain effect. This is because we've moved out of the particle zone generating the rain. Make a new script in your scripts folder and I'm going to name it playercameratracker.cs. Open the script in your editor by double clicking. Now we're going to need the update function but we can actually delete the start function. Then at the top of the class let's add in two public variables. The first will be a transform that we name player camera and the second is a float named y offset. Inside the body of the update function, we're going to assign a new position to our rain and snow effects. Make a new vector 3 and set it equal to player camera transform position, then below it add the y offset to the new coordinate. Now we can set the position of our effects transform to the new position. Okay, very simple script. Let's save and go back into Unity. Now select the rain effect and drag the player camera tracker script onto it 
and do the same for the snow effect. We also can't forget to drag the player camera to the player camera on the script for both of them as well. So enter play mode now and select the rain effect. An outline of it should be highlighted in the scene view showing where the particles are being emitted. In play mode, we can adjust the Y offset until it is a reasonable distance above our player camera. Then copy that offset and exit play mode. Now let's paste in that value as the default so that our rain and snow effects start above the player camera. Now that we've done that, uh, we can see the effects are following the player around. It seems like kind of an odd way to do this. It's like a small rainy cloud literally following you around. But this is a great way to do it because um, you get really high performance. Otherwise, you'd have to generate tons of particles all the time across the entire map. Now with the snow effect, it looks like we can kind of run out of the boundary too quickly, so we stop seeing the snow. So let me show you how to modify these effects if you want. Click on the effect in the hierarchy and open up the particle system in the inspector. Navigate down to the shape dropdown. The shape property is the shape in which the particles are emitted, which is essentially just a rectangle for this effect. We can increase the size of the shape in X and Y from 10 to 20 to make it a bit bigger, and let's do this for both the rain effect and the snow effect. Okay, now in play mode, the snow seems to be behaving a little bit better. Let's do one final change to finish out the scene. Head into the lighting settings and select the skybox material. Let's swap this out to a rainy skybox. You can also see that the fog color is off now that we've changed the skybox, so we can just go into the lighting settings and change this color manually, or we could use the eyedropper on our new skybox horizon to get a good color. Okay, and that does it for the initial rain effect. Let's check out the final scene. That wraps up episode 5. Again, leave a comment below for what you want to see in the next tutorial. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see y'all again soon. Peace!